Please take a few seconds and check this out. The Olympics are supposed to be a showcase of the world's best athletes. So why would France use this massive platform to mock the last summer? What, what are y'all doing? Didn't they put a kid in there? Uh, you have a grown man's testicles on full display for the entire world to see. The more that you unravel and reject Christianity, which is what built the West, the more you're going to get this pagan shoved in your face. Last night was the opening ceremonies for the Olympics, and we saw a desecration, a blasphemy, if you would, of the Last Supper scene, where there were transgender people sitting up on a stage and blaspheming the name of Christ as they were trying to replicate the Last Supper. Many world leaders are now denouncing this. A massive firestorm on social media after the Olympics opening, with critics calling it appalling and an insult to billions of Christians around the world. They were mocking Christianity. But what makes it kind of disturbing even is that there were children close by. The sixth largest wireless provider to the USA found the mockery of Jesus Christ so disrespectful that it can no longer be associated with the 2024 Olympics. It was a spectacular event. Have you guys heard of any controversy? Anybody upset about anything? I mean, it's the internet. I'm sure somebody's going to be mad Someone about something. Mad. No, it's okay. But you will not believe what Elon Musk tweeted about this too. Unless there is more bravery to stand up for what is fair and right, Christianity will perish. Now, some media outlets praise the drag display as a stunning and dazzling display of inclusivity. Every step of the way, I was thinking to myself, oh my, God, oh my, God, how are we going to top this? How are we going to top this? Why waste your time on something like that? There's more important things. But really, when it regards blasphemy, there is nothing more important to address. I'm all the rumors that circulate about Macron, frankly, I think the last thing he'd want to be doing is sort of, you know, putting on display a load of drag queens, but there you are. It is time for you to wake up. So we will start from the top here with a photo of Brigitte Macron. Real name, Jean-Michel Trogneau, okay? Look at this, okay? That person that you are looking at on the right is not a woman. Wow. That's what this was. It was deliberately an insult to Christians all over the world. They reenacted the Last Supper using people from the LGBT community. You have any thoughts on that? No, although I wish I would have seen it. They did a great job trying to be as diverse and inclusive as they could. Very inclusive. Yeah, they yeah. had lots of diversity in it. I thought it was fine. Um, it, it's these drag women or men. And there was a lot of perception that this was mocking um, Christians. How is it mocking Christians, though? I don't get that. How would it be a mockery of Christians? Because, How do we know they're not Christians? Well, because they're dressed up sexually and provocatively. Christians and... do that. You are lying to the public. So here is a photo, by the way, just over the years, Jean-Michel Trugneau, as he became Brigitte, as I said, the evidence for this is overwhelming. There is no evidence that Brigitte Macron lived for the first 30 years of his life. There's none, actually. He's right, because if we as Christians stand back and let the whole world laugh at our savior, no one's going to get saved. If we ourselves do not take our message seriously and stand next to the Lord Jesus Christ and be prepared to be counted and count the cost, no one is going to believe us when we say Christ Jesus is the most special thing. He is the most precious person in the world. So right now, today, Today is not the day to be silent. Guys, I believe you're most of you are Christians. I'm a Muslim, yes? This is Romania, supposed to be the most Christian country in Europe. Yeah. You cannot allow them to desecrate something as important as the Last Supper with transsexuals and little children, pedophilia. There has to be a point you stand up to your beliefs. In those opening ceremonies, there was witness of worshiping of a golden calf, in a sense, genitalia, mockery of the Last Supper, and of the horsemen from the book of Revelation. Then there's the inverted imagery of Revelation 6 with the four horsemen, one of which rode in on a white horse. One user wrote, and I quote, they are literally mocking the Last Supper and majority of France are followers of Christ. Nice, I mean, LGBT, why not? Christians and other religious people are saying that that was offensive, that it was blasphemous to Jesus. Do, do you think they make a point? Uh, no, I don't think so. And of course, we got more of the innocent, neutral, totally tolerant drag people dancing with uh, children. It's usually the same people that are like, oh, you're such a triggered snowflake. 
are the same people that see everything and they're like, this is about me and my religious beliefs and they're making fun of me and they're whiny crybabies about it. If we're gonna respect each other, a Christian or a Catholic shouldn't mock or make fun of the LGBT community but the LGBT community seems to be able to mock or make fun of Christianity. It seems like it's a double standard, don't you think? Oof, uh, I don't know really. There's no way in absolute hell I would let any child in my family go anywhere near the Olympics after what I just saw. And isn't that sad? They seem to go out of their way to completely offend 2.6 billion people and make the main focus of the event political as opposed to sports. Enjoy watching the most talented athletes in the world compete in their sports. We didn't come to see a group of mentally ill perverts dancing and shaking their stuff in front of little kids and trying to lead people to hell. So where would we hide a revolver if we were naked? Je sais où vous pensez, where? Mais I know where you think, but it's not a good idea. Today is the day to speak up and say, this is wrong. We do not agree with this. And we stand with ceasefire. We stand with those who say, no, we will not watch the Olympics this year because you are mocking our savior. So unnecessary. You have these athletes coming together on a world stage. And this is the message you sent. Ask yourself this, Jen. Would they have done this with Prophet Muhammad? If you have something in life and you don't stand up for it, it will not last. If you have a house, you don't maintain it, it will fall down. Business, you don't work, it's gone. Relationship, you don't take care of her, she'll leave you. It's the same with religion. Drag queens, one of whom wore a crown that really resembled a monstrance, were seated at the table in the exact positions and angles of the 12 apostles of da Vinci's painting. Let's be honest, this Olympic ceremony makes Sam Smith and Lil Nas X sound like the kids' bop version of your favorite branchy secular song. Castrophique is what I call it. And I think the French state should hang their heads in shame. I really do. How do you top mocking a religion on one of the largest world stages meant to unify the world behind sport and competition? To me, it didn't represent any country in the world. It represented a teeny tiny minority of people in a handful of countries in the Western hemisphere of the Northern part of the globe, frankly, about 5% of the population in the sort of elite Anglophone countries and a bit of France. According to the Olympics mission statement, they're supposed to be against any form of discrimination and also oppose to any political abuse of sports and athletes. But as soon as the opening ceremony started, it proved that was a lie. <laughs> Piers Morgan wrote on X quote, by the way, what the F was all this about? A drag queen mockery of the Last Supper at the Olympics? Would they have mocked any other religion like this? Appalling decision. I think there are very many people who mock the religions they grew up in if they felt them to be oppressive and if that's what we're seeing in Christianity. Right. Well, the people who mock, the people who mock Christianity <laughs> get celebrated. The people who mock Islam get killed if they're in the Islamic countries, but... I don't know. I think any of these That's people could the have been Christian. I think it was good entertainment. But what makes it kind of disturbing even is that there were children close by. And I think it was good entertainment. It's Islam or Hinduism. Christianity is the most mocked religion. There was an indication of a sexual threesome, of a sexual act that was about to happen when the skit ended in the French National Library. Paris Olympics opens with suggested bisexual threesome, and uh, it only got more degenerate after this. Didn't they ban Grinder in the Olympic Village though? Let's watch this. Yes. No more rich people, no more poor people. When we get naked again. Yes. Whether you're slim or fat, we're just naked. Visit the Olympics. Let's live how we were born. Naked. Let's live how we were born. So, welcome to the weird west. That's pretty weird. We should not actually just stay quiet when these things happen. We are here to shine our light, right? And if you ask me what is my opinion, well, as Christians, we should not actually have an opinion anymore. Because 
Scripture says that we have to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow Jesus Christ. That means in everything that we do. Paul said that I don't live anymore, but Christ lives in me. So our life now, that is not our own, our lives now is based on the Bible, focusing on living for Jesus Christ. So my life is not my own to live. It is for Jesus Christ and to die is gain. So I don't have opinions. We have to go back to Scripture. What does the Bible say? First of all, Ephesians 5 verse 11 says, take no part. It doesn't say take some part. It says no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Now that is what Scripture says. It's not what I say. And first of all, it is true that you cannot put yourself in a bubble, right? Because we are in this world, but it is important to remember that we are not part of this world. There's a big difference of living in this world, being set apart. That's why I have this shirt on today. You can get the merch in our video description as well. To be set apart for Christ, to live holy for Him, to shine your light. There's a difference between that and then to live in this world and to take part in the sinful actions of this world, including condoning when people blaspheme God, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins on the cross. We are in this world, but we're not part of this world. For example, as a believer, you might have a friend that do not know God. And according to the Bible, you need to love them, but share the gospel. So you can be the friend they turn to when they need love, truth and help, but you cannot be the friend who they want to drink with and get drunk. First of all, at the Olympics, it wasn't just a nice all-inclusive show because they purposefully ridiculed Christians and Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's what they did. That's blasphemy. Now I ask you in love, what would the LGBTQ community, Islam or people from other religions do if they are mocked in such a, an event that is global? They would not like it, right? They would be outraged. So this is a double standard. For a lot of people say, no, the show was great. It was all inclusive. No, it was not. They ridiculed Christians. It's double standard. If this happened to the LGBTQ community, Islam or other religions, they would not think it is okay. So why are they okay with it being done to Christians? Even worse, why are so many Christians okay with it? 2 Peter 3 verse 3 says, knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing following their own sinful desires. Now, just in case you did not know this, if you're not looking at the signs of what the Bible describes of the end times, you need to know that Jesus is coming soon. It makes me excited. It should not stress us or we should not be shocked by what is going on in the world, but we should still shine our lights. We need to look to Christ. We should not become part of this world. This world is not our home. We're just passing through and we should not love the world, the sinful part of this world or the things of this world. Now, personally, I will not watch the Olympics this year. It will come on in four years again. If at that time, if it is God's will, if it, if it will happen, if we're all still here. If it happens and they don't mock God, then I'll watch it. I'll support it. But I cannot support it if they mock Jesus Christ, who suffered, who endured the pain on the cross for me to be saved and to make a mockery out of that. How do you think, if we look at the apostles, what would they have done? And Jesus himself. 1 John 2 verse 15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. A lot of Christians today need to examine themselves to see whether they truly are in the faith because there are a lot of lukewarm Christians today. Matthew 7, Jesus talks about this warning people that in that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, but we prophesy in your name because demons are in your name. But then I will say to them, I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. You see, there's a line being drawn of what it means to be a true reborn Christian and to live in this world claiming to be a Christian. But when we look at your fruit, it is easy to see that you are not. So 
Why is Christianity being mocked so much these last few years? Did you know that from all the religions in the world, Christianity is the most mocked religion? It is because it is true. Because our fight is not against each other, flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces in the air. Demons, the devil that is trying and working through evil men to try and ridicule Christianity because it is the only way to the Father. And I need to tell you that this will increase and you need to decide how you're going to handle this. We also read in James 4 verse 4, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Now, should you watch or even support the Olympics? Well, as a reborn Christian, your aim now is to be like Jesus, to love holy, to be like Him. If you truly are a child of God, you have the indwelling Holy Spirit. You were sealed the day you became a Christian, declared righteous. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of promise. And the Holy Spirit in you cries out, Abba, Father. You worship God, not just, oh, because you have to now in the flesh. No, because you want to in the Spirit because you love Him. And so now, as a reborn Christian, your aim is to do what? To be set apart, to live holy, but to be like Jesus Christ. You need to follow in His footsteps. So you need to ask yourself this simple and easy question. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus, after they ridiculed him and blasphemed, would he still watch it just because he wants to enjoy it and have fun? Is that not acting in the flesh? What would Jesus do? How is the Holy Spirit in you leading you? Who will always lead you according to the Bible. 1 John 2 verse 6 says, Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. You know, the more I grow in Christ, becoming a mature Christian, learning what it means to truly abide in Him, to reach that point of complete surrender, the more I love Jesus, the more I just want to, I want to do what He wants me to do. You know, and the life I have now here in this world, it is in Christ. And so I love Him more, and the more my life, my, my love for Him grows, the more the, this world and the things of this world is just growing dim. And so now, even if I doubt about doing something, I know I should not do it because I don't have the peace of the Spirit in me. So if you are doubting, then don't do it. Because Romans 14 verse 23 says, But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. You see, everything you do now, you need to do to be like Jesus, to act in faith, to walk in the Spirit. If you don't do that, then you will sin. It says then, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. You also need to understand that the more we get closer to the end times, all the evil that is going to increase, it is not God's will for it to increase, right? Because His will is for us not to do sin, but a lot of people will choose the darkness instead of the light. He told us what will happen because He knows what will happen. And we should not be surprised at it. But it should be extremely important for you because the closer we get to the end times, the more important it will be for you to be set apart. There will be more things in the world that the sinful world will do that they want everybody to do because they will want it to be inclusive for everyone. That includes doing certain things that we do not agree with. And we have to draw a line to say, I am a child of God. I am not going to partake in this. And the events, the things that we cannot partake in, it is going to increase. But you need to ask yourself, is it more important for you to partake in these things, to have fun? Or is God your priority? For me, I'm okay to deny my fleshly desires, to not partake in many things, because I would rather want to spend time with God. Because our joy and our peace, it does not come from material, worldly things. You get a little bit of happiness here and there with certain things, you know, certain sports you can enjoy because it is still good. You can enjoy fishing and all these things. But I will not partake in things that the enemy is putting forward to deceive a lot of people and that is blaspheming Jesus Christ. I will not partake in it.
because my joy comes from Jesus Christ himself. He gives me everything I need to live a fulfilled, purposeful, driven life in peace and joy, even if I have trials and tribulation, because he produces it supernaturally within me. What about you? Are you going to put God first in your life? Because you know that this world is passing away. You are but a vapor. The one day you are here, the next you are gone, standing in front of God, and he's going to judge you. I agree with Paul who said in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10, For the sake of Christ then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. If you offered me an Olympic gold medal, you know, even from London, my home games, um, and, you know, said, is that more important than your faith? Um, it's not because, you know, my medals will, will pass away. So in the light of eternity, actually knowing Jesus is the most important thing um, you can ever have or, or know. The sinful world is very deceitful because there's evil working behind them. Again, our fight is not against each other. We need to love all people. I can't say that more clearly than that. We need to even love our enemies, as Jesus says, because a lot of people are just uninformed and they chose the darkness, but God still loves them. He wants them to be saved. That's our position as well. We understand that God has given everyone a self-determining will to choose between right and wrong, dark and light. A lot of people, unfortunately, choose wrong. We need to love them, but hate the sin they do. Now, the evil behind them is very deceitful. Even at the Olympics, they came out just now recently and they said, well, um, we're sorry, but also actually they said, we are not sorry because we feel like we were inclusive and everything was okay. Watch it. Clearly, there was never uh, an intention uh, to, to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that Thomas Jolie really tried to uh, really intend to, to celebrate community tolerance. That was uh, his word yesterday. And uh, looking at the result of the polls that we shared, uh, we believe that this ambition was, uh, was achieved. Now, I have made my decision because me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I will enjoy it to serve him, to be set apart. Because my eyes are on Jesus and not on this temporary world that is passing away. Now it is time for you to make your decision according to the Holy Spirit in you and according to God's word. Before you go, always remember that God loves you and I love you too. Oh, and if you want to know how to deal with woke culture, watch this video here. I'll see you there. Cheers, guys.